There are dozens of products and industries that are a gold mine for the people that helm them. Often we think of powerful industries. We think of the people who sell diamonds, luxury clothing, gold, oil, and cars. The superpowers of the world that we see on red carpets often run tech businesses or real estate empires. But what if I told you one of the wealthiest people on earth earned his fortune from a different kind of industry, chocolate? Today, we're going to take a look at the chocolate empire of Giovanni Ferrero and his family. We'll see exactly how the business was formed, how they've managed to rise to the top, and how their number one product, Nutella, skyrocketed them to success. Giovanni Ferrero is the chairman of Ferrero Group with a net worth of $32 billion. He is the richest person in Italy and in the top 50 of the richest people on earth. In 2019 alone, he made a whopping $9.5 $63 billion. His company, Ferrero Group, sold $11.9 billion worth of sweets in 2018 alone. They employ 40,000 people around the globe, and their products are sold in 160 countries. But obviously, it hasn't always been that way. Ferrero Group got its humble beginning way back in the 1920s. At the time, Pietro Ferrero, Giovanni's grandfather, was traveling around Italy looking for work. He often worked in pastry shops and chocolatiers throughout the country, trying to improve his skills and support his young family. At the time, Italy wasn't exactly a great place to be. Under the power of fascists, many people struggled. In 1938, Pietro decided to get his hand at selling biscuits and other pastries to Italian troops stationed in Africa. He moved the family to East Africa, but after a few months, he was forced to return back home to Italy. He settled in Alba, a tiny village in the hills. Unfortunately, at this point, Italy was even worse off than when he had left. World War II had rattled the country, and chocolate was a luxury that wasn't available and most people couldn't afford. Desperate for a way to make and sell sweets, Pietro created a mixture of molasses, hazelnut oil, coconut butter, and a dash of cocoa, the precursor to Nutella. The product was called Giondio, which was a twist on Giondia, a hazelnut paste that was invented in Italy way back in the 1800s for a similar reason. A blockade imposed by Napoleon put a strain on cocoa supplies, so local chocolatiers had to find alternatives. Pietro sold his Giondio in wax papers on the streets to locals. Very quickly, the product gained a cult-like following. Production went into overdrive, and Pietro could hardly make it fast enough for the customers. At night, Pietro would often hop out of bed and rush over to his factory to check the samples of the product. He'd come home and make his wife try them all hours of the night, excited to get the product just right. And fortunately, he did. In 1946, Pietro paired with his business-minded brother to form Ferrero. Giondio was selling with popularity around Italy, and everything was looking up. Unfortunately, Pietro passed away in 1949, leaving the business to his young son, Michel, who became Giovanni's father. When Michel took control of the company, it was a challenging time period for Italy. 1950s Italy was painfully poor, struggling in the aftermath of losing World War II and desperately trying to repair the country. At the time, Giondio was sold in solid blocks and people couldn't afford to use what little cash they had to buy a bar of chocolate. So, Michel came up with a solution. He transformed Giondio into a spreadable paste and placed it in reusable jars. By selling the chocolate and the hazelnut concoction in reusable jars, he gave poor customers more incentive to buy his product as opposed to others. And luckily, this worked. He renamed the concoction Super Crema, which was just one step away from becoming the Nutella that we all know and love today. In the 1950s, Michel also expanded Ferrero Group into Germany. Still freshly recovering from the war, doing business in the country was a fairly easy transition. So much so that the Ferrero factories were created in converted Nazi missile factories. This expansion made a huge impact on the company, allowing them to further expand into Belgium. Belgium and Austria. At this point, in the mid-1960s, Italy had started to slowly emerge from the destruction of World War II. Since the residents had more money to play with, Michel decided to improve the recipe and quality of his super crema by adding more cocoa and cocoa butter. And thus, Nutella was finally made. In 1964, this sweet treat was finally on the market. By the 1970s, Ferrero was turning a huge profit and was one of the most wealthy 
businesses in Italy. Unfortunately, that was a good thing and a bad thing. At the time, high-profile people were being taken for ransom. Michel feared for the safety of his sons, Giovanni and Pietro Jr. He shipped them off to boarding school in Brussels, which had the added advantage of making the young boys comfortable working in other countries, which would be useful as Ferrero Group expanded more and more. After earning his education in Brussels, Giovanni traveled to Pennsylvania in the United States to get his college degree in marketing at Lebanon Valley College. Once he got his education and traveled the world, Giovanni returned home and got his first job within his family's company, taking over the operations for the Tic Tac brand in Belgium. At the time, Ferrero was in control of Ferrero Rocher, Kinder Chocolate Products, Tic Tacs, Pocket Coffee, and Mon Cherie, which were all creations invented by Ferrero. In 1997, Giovanni and his brother took over the company, becoming the CEOs. Giovanni handled the creative aspects, while his brother handled the day-to-day -day business operations. This continued for quite some time, until Pietro Jr. passed away in a biking accident in 2011. And unfortunately, Michel, Giovanni's father, passed away in 2015. For years, Giovanni acted as the sole CEO and chairperson of Ferrero Group, until he hired the first executive that wasn't in the Ferrero family, Lapo Civelletti. This wasn't the only big change that Giovanni made, however. As you can probably tell, Ferrero had never been a company prone to acquisitions. Most of their products were developed in-house, and the popularity of those innovative products are what allowed them to grow. But Giovanni decided this way was no longer the correct way to make the company expand. Afraid of being dwarfed by other candy companies, he started acquiring as many products and companies as possible. And he went for some big ones. In 2015, Ferrero Group bought Thornton's for $170 million. They also purchased Kellogg's Cookies, giving them control of famous Amos and Keebler Cookies. But they weren't done there. They bought Ferrara, the American company behind Lemonheads, Fireballs, Red Hots, Now and Laters, and Nerds, for approximately $1.3 billion. The biggest acquisition, however, was Nestle's American Candy Line, which Ferrero Group bought for $2.8 billion dollars. Included in this deal are some of my favorite candies, including Butterfingers, Crunch, Baby Ruth, Laffy Taffy, and Spree. With the Nestle and Ferrera purchase, Giovanni had big plans. Ferrera now handles the products from the Nestle purchase, leaving him with less on his plate and more in his pockets. Many people have criticized or questioned Giovanni about straying away from his ancestors' manner of operation with Ferrero. However, in an interview, Giovanni responded in defense of the acquisition, saying, Tradition is like a bow. The more we stretch the bowstring, the farther we can throw the arrows of modernity and innovation. And while many have said that the American market will be challenging, given the rise in health-conscious parents, Giovanni scooped up another company that may help with that. Fannie Mae in Chicago, Illinois, has recently shifted to sell gluten and dairy-free sweets. Ferraro purchased Fannie Mae for a cool $115 million just a few years ago, giving them access to some healthier products. Even with all these acquisitions, there is still one pride and joy of the Ferraro Group that will probably remain their top seller forever, Nutella. If you haven't dipped a spoon in a jar full of Nutella at least once in your life, I mean, you're missing out, my dear viewer. Today, they make over 365,000 tons of Nutella every year. In fact, they use about one-third of the world's hazelnuts for Nutella and Ferrero Rocher. Because of this, Giovanni also purchased several of the world's hazelnut supplies, simultaneously making Ferraro Group the world's largest hazelnut supplier and user. That being said, the Nutella recipe is sacred to Ferraro, and they are incredibly secretive about it. So secretive, in fact, that no one was allowed to see their factory until 2011. No one from the outside world has had a peek of the factory in 65 years. During that time, tours and journalists were banned out of fear of industrial industrial espionage, which sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. The recipe and equipment still remains a closely guarded secret. Many of the other chocolates were photographed and explained to journalists who visited in 2011. Perfection is so important in the factory that even a tiny flaw in the appearance of a chocolate causes an immediate reaction. When a poor, flawed chocolate is detected, a puff of air is shot at it by a machine, sending the chocolate tumbling off the conveyor belt and hopefully into a secret stash basket that maybe the workers get into later. But 
it isn't just the factory that is so secretive. Giovanni, the richest man in Italy, the king of Nutella, is so private about his life that no one but those close to him even know how many children he has, or what country he resides in. For a man with a fortune of $32 billion, you might imagine he'd be flashing his yachts in private jets as he zipped around the world in style. But really, all the public knows about Giovanni is that he's an author who's a bit eccentric. He's written eight novels, most of which are dramas that take place in Africa. Those who have interviewed him have remarked that he speaks more like a game show host than a billionaire. And perhaps that's just what the chocolate world needs. A Nutella king with a Willy Wonka flair. So, there you have it. The empire of Nutella and the rich man at its elm. Giovanni Ferraro. What's your favorite sweet treat? I don't know about you, but I'm running to the candy store right now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. Pip-pip-doodly-doo.